<laughs> Hello, my name is, my previous speaker said, is Robo Patika. Um, maybe I start off uh, affirmation and uh, excuse you for my not well English. <laughs> but from German, I remember only from school uh, that Volkswagen is Franz is still in good auto. Uh, so, day by day, my work is being owner of Bobson Company, as we see in the domain name. Uh, my nickname is Bobson also. Uh, and I have a software house and publish house. Uh, in the meantime, I'm vice president of the Polish Linux Users Group and study on the University of Sarajevo, and that will be almost all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the previous speeches, uh, which was probably technical. This will be a little um, not technical. It's rather about five philosophy, ideas, uh, and what's behind it. So let's start. Let's start fr from a few questions. You can don't mind about the pictures because this is mainly pictures and not really big part of text. So uh, who uses Wikipedia on this? Okay, and who uses uh, Firefox? Oh, almost all. And who uses uh, LibreOffice? Microsoft Windows and LibreOffice. Okay, and uh, now second question. Who uses this in the commercial way? Uh, don't be shy, it's not the time when you are parias when you use open source as a, as a commercial, okay? So, about three persons which are a little shy to show itself. Uh, and uh, so, from this three person who pay for the using, who donate the software houses which provide this open source. <laughs> <laughs> Google you mean work? You mean <laughs> work for? <laughs> that what is what I um, don't worry. It's usual uh, deviation. Uh, you, usually it looks like this that most of people use and almost nobody paid, or like in this case nobody paid. So ask who contributed. Okay, who contributed? Ah, <laughs> we have. This is our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go forward. So, for start, uh, let's try to make some definition. Who will try to define what means the remix culture? To be shy. Okay, it's when we get. Uh, uh, we have one here. <laughs> when we get one piece from uh, uh, one. source, piece of second source, piece of third source, and we remix it to our uh, product. And what well, well, culture in it? Uh, culture is everything, I think, today. It's uh, software, it's music, it's uh, movie. Okay, well, let's give some prize for it, because it's good to be volunteer. <laughs> I heard that volunteers died in the Vietnam War. But as we see, there's some on, on, the, on the side. So, uh, yeah, that's true. The remix culture is uh, mainly this what our friend told. It's not about uh, downloading the free videos from Pirate Bay. That's also a funny thing because they call this piracy. I heard from the law book that uh, piracy is uh, engaging in the war state. Uh, 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 craft on the sea, and I don't think so you can do this from computer. Maybe in some games, but not really on the on the real life. But uh, let's go forward. Uh, so uh, calling something PRC is not really a good way to tell that you uh, steal intellectual property from somebody. But who will try to define what means patronage? Maybe I don't so the price will be better. <laughs> My gadget has no buttons. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> because he was having the easy, easy part. Yeah. Um, 
maybe our friend from Microsoft will try to define what Arduino's doing. Um, no volunteers this time, so this one was shoot. Okay. As we try to translate from Polish Wikipedia source, uh, Mesonap is uh, from Polish, uh, patronage in English. It's a care of influential and wealthy, enthusiastic and fans of liter literature and art over the artist. In general, it means that you support their, their work. And what we should uh, keep in mind in this definition? The two very interesting words. Who on this uh, place feel influential person? Now oh, don't be shy, you are <laughs> the leader of open source in Microsoft, it must be influential. <laughs> a little bit, okay. And who feel wealthy? Okay, so. <laughs> so the question is, what this guy in the black suit, not suit even, but over, try to tell us if nobody is influential and wealthy? What the hell is this 2.0, which is usually a trademark now to all the things which we have in the IT market, everybody knows about Web 2.0, no matter what it means, it means always nothing. <laughs> what it will be? Okay, so let's try to start from the beginning. The people uh, are driven by two basic needs. First need is need to possessed. It needs to have some. Everybody wants to have as much as they can. Uh, no matter if this is uh, properties like uh, uh, having a house or having a car or this, mo uh, this is mo money. Uh, money nowadays is not really what was in the old times when it was compared to the gold, but it's still a money. And that's the first need which drives people. Second need is the need of share. Need of share is the basic need of a concept of society. If we will not share, then we cannot create a society, we cannot create nations, uh, because everything about nation and society is about sharing. We teach our children in garden yard that they should share. If the one person eat his pencil, the second person should share with him. <laughs> it's not really healthy to, 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 to eat some such, such things like pencil, but you can do this. So, but we also live now in the time of remix, and it's easy to prove because when we look at the movies in the cinema now, most of them are based on the, the, on, on the books, like uh, Harry Potter, uh, or it's uh, another remix of the, some kind of the comics. Uh, not too far to, to search uh, blockbusters like uh, Four Last Days was the uh, remix of the, of the comics. The same we have in the music market. And we also don't need to find uh, very far. If we, serve, if we look at Tia, DJ Tiesto, who know DJ Tiesto? Okay, this person was first. We get something. <laughs> I need to give the, the gifts to you, so I need to make some forks to this. Maybe there is a few batteries inside. <laughs> <laughs> this this one is a, a green power computing, not this battery is on your hand. So, uh, DJ Tiesto, the best, uh, his one of the best uh, tracks is the Adagio for Strings, which is a remix of music from the uh, all, also blockbusters movie Platon, and author was Parado. So that's what we have uh, in the music, for instance. And the other market is the Brazilian market of uh, music about which you can uh, hear in the movie uh, Good Copy, Bad Copy. 
uh, where music, in fact, all is uh, something about remix. So let's go forward, uh, because about this market will be able to fall uh, in the future. Next thing, uh, YouTube. The most videos on the YouTube are based on the mixing, remixing, uh, making fake uh, 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 announcements of the movies, uh, Transporter 5000 and so on. It's all about remixing. We also have something which is this conference is about so software. Software in nowadays is mostly take IDs from other software, uh, work on it a little and create something new. And uh, basic concept of programming is uh, concept of remixing because somebody was created this language in which you, you wrote your program. So it's about mixing. Finally, if we look that way, the whole science approach is about uh, mixing culture. Without uh, sharing ideas in the science, without mixing these ideas, checking, uh, uh, taking uh, dif different uh, looks at it, we will not make such progress as we are now. So, where lies the problem? Because it looks like uh, we have the brilliant future and there's nothing to complain about. The problem is that uh, nowadays quite a lot people and companies and politicians try to keep uh, information in secret. Uh, no longer the scientists are working for the public uh, goodness, it's rather working for the big development uh, in companies and keeping the things in secret, we see it, for instance, in the, in the healthcare market, where quite a lot of uh, new approaches just disappeared after being discovered. Uh, of course, we can tell that this is some kind of the conspiracy theory, but like one of the uh, CIA agents told in television, the basic concept of uh, uh, conspiracy theory is that it's not theory. Let's go forward. So, but we know that information primarily wants to be free. And this because of our one of our basic needs. We want to share. If you invent something, you want that somebody see it, not that uh, only the uh, in, inner uh, inner uh, sides of the box where it's keep it, see this information and you discover something and prob probably all other people which see it also dies accidentally so, but uh, <coughs> corporations not really see it that way, they have another point of view, information is a proper uh, is something which is worth a lot of money uh, nowadays there is there are rumors that uh, information is mainly 80 to 90 percent of uh, value of some, some corporation. Maybe our, our friend from Microsoft can tell us about it. What do you think? It's, it's true that the, that the 80 to 90 percent of the uh, value of the corporation is information? Or even more. Even more than 90, okay. <coughs> so, uh, and what we have from this, if we look at what's happening on the copyright market, four notes in the music can be uh, patented and covered by the uh, intellectual property law. Four notes, so it's one time. So it's uh, in fact, what probability that you use this combination of notes is quite high. Uh, on top of this, we have whole uh, trolling patent business. So the, the corporation which uh, lawyer corporation, corporation somebody uh, tell that it's not a lawyer corporation, corporation is liar component mm -hmm. corporation. Oh, sorry, little mistake on the one letter. <coughs> and my English, as I told, is not fluent, so. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, they make business from uh, charging people that they broke some patent for double clicking the mouse, uh, uh, using the black and white bars to store information and so on and so on. Uh, the patents were even, we don't have uh, real uh, hardware implementation um, described. It. It's only a patent for a piece of wood uh, with rounded corners like in the one of patents of the uh, Apple last days. And we have such strong uh, business uh, influence for this law that uh, in the secret, secret there was a try and still is to create a law uh, which will be even more not good for us and it's about ACTA which uh, uh, I will not make a law presentation about ACTA now but it's quite strong influence for us if we look at the opposite side of movement, because this will look like, okay, everything is about copyright now. We have the movement of creative common, where people can, I think in a quite good way, uh, share uh, your own achievements without losing something on it. And we have whole floss movement, uh, so the whole software on the quite long list of the open license, even the Microsoft Open License, which are involved in it. So mainly information wants to be free. Uh, so do this opposite side, do this uh, people from the open source and so on, talk about something new. Is this some new approach, so the civilization growing and okay, there was a copyright and now they, they, they think, okay, let's go one step forward, or it's just movement to come back to something which is normal. To check this, we need to go a little back in the history. So for first, when we look at the times of the communists in the Poland, there was nothing like that, like copy law, copyright law. Uh, when we look at the Amiga Sam, who looked who was having an Amiga computer? Oh, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but only for gaming. <laughs> okay. uh, so the, probably they remembered the demos uh, on the Amiga, which was... Uh, where, if we look at it, it was exactly what uh, the copyleft approach and uh, floss approach, uh, remix culture approach, is all about. There, there, there was no such name for it in those days. But everybody shared the concept of uh, how to programming, share the pieces of code uh, without any type of license. Then they just share it because they, they want to have it and they want to share it, like in the basic needs of people. Uh, we was having the whole uh, approach of public domain software when the copy law started to, to appear in the uh, USA. Uh, the, there was movement of public domain software which was in fact, something <coughs> called free for use software now. Probably nobody used the public domain name. Now, the public domain becomes a, a sentence which is used in the law, that something comes to the public domain, so the copyright law stopped to work on it because of uh, time from creation. Uh, and there was a swapping, which was uh, something which is about sharing also. Because people which were swappers on the, on the Amiga send was people who exactly do the sharing. So they send the floppy drives by the snail mail. There was no internet, so we was need to develop something. Some people uh, claim that uh, IP over pigeon is uh, faster than standard internet. Yeah, they even, they even prove it. Because if you send uh, 32 gigabytes uh, card uh, with the pigeon is probably faster than <laughs> the standard slow line connection. So how, how the whole concept of the copy, copy law and copyright law begin, begin we can uh, look at the uh, England in the 60th century. Uh, the first uh, thing which can be considered as the copyright law was the chapter of King Anna 
from 17 to 10, and it was about uh, about the uh, possibility to print something on the paper because the Gutenberg created the, the printing machine, and, and now the, there was a problem for Kingdom because uh, in the old days uh, you need to write the, by hand the book, and now the not really good for kingdom. IDs can be spread by simple printing of piece of paper. So that's very dangerous. You should censor it. <coughs> and the first law was the King's Anna law. And it was, in fact, nothing about uh, keeping uh, the rights of the author in the right place. It was just about making censorship and uh, keeping the people who sell the the paper and print the books over out of the business of printing books was more important in it. So do we have any rights now? <coughs> because everybody tells, okay, copyright law. So is there a rights for us in this law? We have the yeah, rights to the say nothing. Yeah, it's the, yeah that, that's true. But you will not get another piece of some battery. Batteries. <laughs> batteries. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> we will see on after part. <coughs> Maybe there are batteries in power. <laughs> so, uh, do we have any rights? Yeah, we have right to tell nothing. Because uh, if we look uh, at the licensing, it's mostly about uh, you should be glad that we give it to you and you can use it. The third project uh, wrote in one of his books, A Good Omen. Uh, that uh, the, the devil which was on, on, the, on the earth see the license from the Panasonic and send to the, to the hell with the note learn people <laughs> <laughs> this is how you should make the zero graph not some bullshit one, one piece of paper it should have at least 50 pages and a <laughs> very small print nobody will read it uh, another example of this, how the copyright law is a right for the users, uh, was the case of General Motors electric car, which was sold for the normal price, like the, all other cars, but it was not a real buying of the car. Who of you will agree that you pay the normal price for the car and you are not the owner of the car? Nobody? Come on, you agree that you are not the owner of the software and you have and, and you pay the full price for it. <laughs> so this car was uh, lent for the ten years and there was of course uh, lens hold, holding agreement that in the agreement was that probably probably corporation will, will agree for another ten years period. The car was great, it was quite a good uh, way to, uh, to driving, and it was electric. But after 10 years, all of them was taken back from the people which had it. So you pay full price, and after 10 years, you have nothing. And you don't have right to nothing, so you should be glad that we don't kill you. Was this all time that way? Okay, let's go much back, like the Sheldon in the TBBT told uh, in the old Greece, and so on and so on. Primary tribes. If we look at the primary tribes, there was person of shaman who usually pick up one person and learn all knowledge and share all knowledge of the tribe by the words, by the speaking, because there was no, they usually don't write. Uh, tell everything because somehow he need to find this person which will be told uh, about something which for them was science but the primary tribes are a little problem because we, we don't have them now too much and we cannot check if this is really true but we have something that the tribe which we know quite well because of Bible is the tribe of, tribe of Israel the tribe of Israel was uh, such kind of the tribe when the speaking and share of uh, knowledge uh, was uh, art. 
he was somebody, if he was able to tell stories in the way that everybody wants to listen. And that's how they share whole knowledge about this tribe, because they was a nomad. Israel the tribe is a tribe of the nomads who always was uh, in the move. In fact, look at it. They don't, they, they don't have real country from their belong. If we go a little to our times, but only a little, ancient Greece and uh, Forum Romanum, it was also a place when, where the sharing of knowledge was the basic concept of uh, anything. And uh, now you are the PhD in something. So it means, in fact, doctor of philosophy. Uh, so only one science. By the way, philosophy is quite uh, mathematic-driven science, but only a part of mathematics. In those days, uh, usually those people was uh, scientists of all kinds of art, doctors, all kinds of science, because uh, they was doctor in philosophy, mathematics, uh, physics, all other stuffs uh, which was in those days. And uh, what was the very important uh, uh, in, in those approach? Knowledge goes first, profits goes forward. Nowadays it's, it's quite often that some of the first have profits and not really have knowledge because of a uh, nice place on the market or something like that. Uh, in those days uh, we can uh, simply prove it. Archimedes and his uh, mirrors, uh, he first created them, he first prove that uh, he's a good scientist and he can help the city to protect itself. Uh, and then comes the whole profits of, about it and the whole uh, uh, shining on him. If we go um, forward to our times, uh, the concept of the street, uh, street artists, which uh, give the place uh, on street and if they was good and, the, and they place nice, they get a money. If they was not so good, they get not some money. If they was totally terrible as an anarchist, they usually changed the way of approach and they took some other kind of work or get killed or something like that. So it was terrible times. Uh, another very special kind of the culture uh, in the old days was the whole culture of scripts because uh, that's the probably one of the first uh, really rabbit culture. If somebody write the book by hand from other book, probably he skips something, adds something, change because come on, you cannot write it that way. It's not not nice. It's have no ring, no art in it. Let's change it. So. That's why we have sometimes the same book in very different meaning in even. Uh, but uh, we talk all the time now about the people who are doing something which are not really organized. But uh, who can show the example of the university who, which works on the way of uh, remix culture and uh, shared culture? Yeah, that's a very simple question. And I have still have a, a gift for you. <laughs> Polish University? Uh, which Polish University? <laughs> Zook. Uh, you will get something because it's true. Any university nowadays, especially in Poland, if you look at the law, there is a sentence which told Thank you. that all lectures on the university are free for everybody. Anybody from street can go to the university, sit at the lecture and listen. And that's given by the law. But the first, where it comes from, that approach, the first uh, really university in Europe, who knows which was the first and biggest university in Europe? I will give a hint in Paris. 
Paris 3. Paris University, what is called Paris University. Sorbonne. Yeah, that's true. It's Sorbonne. Paris it will be something for you. <laughs> <laughs> Paris University, Sorbonne. It's the, one of the first universities, probably the first university in Europe. And how it was created? It's very funny because in some time, some point of time, uh, one, one bishop tells, okay, we have the church and make a speeches there. Let's make a science speeches there. And those science speeches should be free for everybody. And this is how the Sorbonne starts. Then it's, of course, uh, uh, evaluate, and, but the primary approach that the speeches, uh, the lectures are free for everybody stays there. And if you want to be a student and have also an exercises and check out, of course you should pay, but, but if you are good enough only to listen and learn, then it's free for you. So, by the way, uh, who know who was the first female professor on the Sorbonne? Skudowska Kri. Yes, it was Polish female professor, uh, Mrs. Skłodowska Kiri, uh, one of the inventor of the X-ray, by the way, and the use of X-rays. That's the case why he, why she dies with the husband. Uh, but they they didn't know that it's so dangerous. So. Uh, and the question is why, in fact. It was working because if we think, okay, you want to be, you want to share, you want to do one another thing in the science, but you want to eat, and if you want to eat, you need to pay. So how, how this works? It works because of patronage of art, this influence and wealthy people who pay that you are an artist, that you are a scientist or you are the alchemist. <laughs> this will be. Next question, because do, was, they, was there an uh, opposite side, or opposite movement, so keeping secrets? Of course, there was the whole theory of the chaos and uh, all uh, theory <coughs> about uh, ancient civilization was driven about this, everybody keeps secrets. So, uh, we can show such movements. It was uh, alchemists, for instance. They usually keep on things in secret because if you prove that you can create gold, probably you will be killed quite soon. Uh, and uh, other, other um, example is high priest in the Egyptian sects. They also have mathematics and physics and uh, astrology knowledge, but they keep it secret. And not so far example before Gutenberg, all books was kept in secret because having a book was quite a price. So is the copyright or registered trademarks approach the dominant approach in the world in nowadays? Let's check. Who know? I have something to give. I have but I will keep this for end. Uh, because this is the, 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 the better better price. Yeah. Uh, so you can think how to score it. <laughs> maybe we create some exercises. Can we share it? <laughs> uh, it's something you can share. In fact it's something you can share. Uh, probably with husband or her boyfriend or something. But you can share it. Oh, with friends also. Uh, if you like it and you are not worried. <laughs> <laughs> like a man, we're telling about share and even uh, creating of new human is a sharing. You need to share DNA to create new new being. <laughs> yeah, and as somebody tells, we like it. <laughs>
Yeah, I don't think so, no. Who don't like uh, sharing DNA? <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> Is it open source conference? <laughs> 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 country in the world and the biggest community in the world, so it's by definition the biggest market in the world. And is this copyright market? I really doubt about this. The approach of China is, okay, you patent it, we copy it. <laughs> Please do this patent because we want to copy from somewhere. <laughs> so, next market. What's the biggest market of the movie creation? Yeah, you're, you're really kidding. Hollywood, come on. Also not. You closer, but also not. More to the south. China. Of course, Africa. In RPA, in the one year, there's about 1,200 new movies created. Of course, yeah, that's about something. That's estimation. It can be. It can be much more because it's not such cinema like we are used to. It's not uh, maybe the best uh, movies uh, with the effects, but they like it. And they're shared also in not so copyright way. And another such market, also quite big, is India. And they also are not so care about copyright and intellectual property law. So, as you can see, in fact, a small piece of war where is quite a lot of wealthy of, of this world try to force the rest of the world that the copyright is something very good and so on. <laughs> so why the business try to enforce such copyright and don't want to change because so uh, we see here uh, the two big losers of the, our time, and uh, it's quite a simple answer. As everything in this lecture, because as I told, it's not the IT technology lecture, so it's everything should be simple. Why every model need to defend itself in the economical and business way? And that's why the business don't want to change so much, because they don't like it. They need to re redefine whole procedures, think how to make money, and so on and so on. But uh, is the uh, open sharing, open source flaws, and whole remix culture, and so on, a business model which is communist time when you should share and don't expect anything? I really doubt about this, because there is a lot of companies which make big money on open source, and one, one of the is here. <laughs> yeah, don't be shy. You, you sell. You are the biggest seller of the Linux support in the, in the world yeah, now. So, true. so, so it's really. It is possible. Maybe on the next year conference, uh, I will tell you how to make a business on open source because my software house is uh, based on the open source approach and it's, and I live from it. So I have, I have money to come here and I have money to eat, so <laughs> it it's working. And that's why, uh, but it's working only in one case, and about this will be a little far, because when we change the definition of this patronage to the 2.0, we should remember that it's not about now, about wealthy people, it's about everybody. Everybody must get involved because it's not a free dinner. The remix culture, the sharing culture is not about getting something for free. It's about rather freedom of speech, like the Stalin told. So, 
Who can help? Who can help? All of you. You can help. Of <laughs> course you can help. Everybody can help. Impossible is nothing, you should remember this. But who should help? There's a little difference between can and should. They who know how. Not really. I think that from the moral point of view, the basic uh, shouldness of, uh, lies on the people who get money from using open source and whole Remix culture. So if you make money on it, share this money with the projects who helps you to have this money. So now the question is, and maybe I will need a little help, uh, how to how to help. And let's try simple way from not financial point of view. Testing code. Testing. Developing. Testing. Yeah, that's true. Translation. Translations. Any kind of involvement in the project is a help. Sometimes it's better than giving a money. Because uh, money means nothing if there are not hands, if there is no hands to work. Uh, you can make a promotion. You can click like it on the Facebook. You can buzz it, you can Twitter it, you can tell your friends that it's a good piece of software and good piece of work, nobody needs it. <laughs> uh, you can test it, you can bug reporting, but there are bug reports are really important. And for first, you can create. As if this is a Remix culture, you can create things by remixing all things. And giving this to people, of course. <laughs> so, and now maybe some contest. The, be the best way to uh, help by money. Maybe somebody would involve no, some. <laughs> I know, give the money is the best way to, <laughs> to help by money. <laughs> Come on. Yes. That good gift for you. Donations. Ah, donations is very simple. <laughs> Try hard. <laughs> <laughs> but we have first, uh, first uh, example donations. Of course, donations <laughs> way to help to buy money. Anybody? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you lady. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will help. We will find another way to, to, to create a contest. Build foundations? One of those is building foundations. Because you can, you can get uh, money from people who don't know which project to support. I have money, okay, I want to support some projects of open source, but I don't know which one. So there are foundations which you can give the money. And you can create such foundation for some bunch of projects. You can uh, make a micro payments, and for micro payments, there was a, uh, I think it's even starting now, is a project where you, where you pay for one account all the time, and you choose the project which you want to support, and your monthly payments are cut to the pieces and give to those projects which you choose. Uh, it's an effect of the. Uh, small cake. Of course, these pieces are very small, but if you take a bunch of those pieces, you get quite serious money. Uh, you can buy gadgets from the project. And you have additional income from it, because usually a t-shirt is usable for you. And of course, the price of this t-shirt was not so small like usual, but you additionally support this project. Uh, and if this conference will be something which you need to pay for, it's also a way to support the products and the projects <coughs> taking involved in conference. So, 
we can get involved, we can help in the way of financial or non-financial approach, and we can make this uh, dream of many people happen, that the state of the sharing will be new approach of the, of the business, or we can do nothing, keep uh, thinking that uh, remix culture is something about communists, so uh, take everything, give nothing, and this market will stay at the level of one person, and probably die someday. So, who can change it? You can change it. That's all, thank you for your attention. Hope you don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and now we...